Hi guys, my name is Rachel and today I'm here to bring you my February book haul. This is all the books I bought in the month of February. So I bought 23 books in the month of February, which is even worse than how many I bought in January. As you can see from my January book haul, I bought 16 books in the month of January and I had planned to not buy that many books in February, but obviously it did not go according to plan. So we bought 23 books over here. <laughs> I don't regret it at all, to be honest. So without further ado, let's get straight into the books that I bought in the month of February. So the first book I have to show you is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is a companion novel to Angie Thomas's other book, The Hate You Give. This book takes place 17 years before the events of The Hate You Give and follows our main character Maverick who is Star's dad from The Hate You Give and he is a 17 year old boy in this. So basically we get to see his backstory which is really really exciting because I loved The Hate You Give. I thought it was such a fantastic book and so so important. The Hate You Give is all about racism and I always thought Star's dad was a very very interesting character in that book so it'll be super interesting to read his backstory and read about him as a child and how he came to be the father he is in The Hate You Give. So I'm really really excited to get to this one. Angie Thomas is an amazing writer. I just want to read every single book she releases so I'm so so excited to get to this one. The next book I have to show you is Apocalypse Kings by Derek Landy. I am obsessed with the Skullduggery Pleasant series. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. It is one of my all-time favorite series. This is just a very, very short book that Derek Landy released for World Book Day in March. So of course I went and bought it. It was like a euro. I mean, of course I'm gonna buy it. It's gonna be amazing. Even the length of it, it's still gonna be amazing because Derek Landy is freaking fantastic. So this short story follows Valkyrie Kane and Skullduggery and basically they have to go undercover in a Dublin school. So Skullduggery, who is a skeleton by the way, Skullduggery has to pass as a school teacher while Valkyrie Kane has to pass as an ordinary school girl. I'm not sure where in the series this takes place. I can't imagine it taking place after the most recent 13th book because I don't know how Valkyrie could possibly pass as a school girl when she's kind of the same age as me. She's like 26. I'm, I'm 25, nearly 26. I don't know but I'm really excited anyway. I'm obviously gonna finish this in one sitting so I'm so excited. I absolutely love these characters. Skullduggery Pleasant is like amazing. He's one of the best characters I've ever read about and Valkyrie as well. She's so so cool. So I'm just really excited to dive straight into this one. The next book I have to show you is The Sudden Appearance of Hope by Claire North. I own Claire North's other book, The First 15 Lives of Harry August, but I still haven't even gotten to that one yet, so I definitely want to read that one first. But I just thought this one sounded so interesting, and Reagan over at Peru's Project has been raving about this book, as well as The First 15 Lives of Harry August. This follows a girl called Hope, and basically everyone forgets who she is. It started when she was 16, everyone starts forgetting who she is, her father starts forgetting to drive her to school, her family set a table for three instead of four people. I'm not entirely sure about the details of this book, but like kind of like that because I would just want to go straight into this one completely blind. It is a standalone as well which I like. As much as I love series sometimes I just love having a standalone so I can just get a complete story in one book and it's just really really nice so I definitely want to get to this one but as I said I want to read her other book first so I might not get to this one for a while but even still I am very much looking forward to it. The next book may surprise you. <laughs> the next book I have to show you is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I don't know how to say his second name. I'm not even going to explain what this book is about because every single person on the planet knows what this story is about. I just love the Jurassic Park movies. It's obviously the first one is the very very best but honestly I, I enjoy them all and even the Jurassic World movies I really enjoy so I just thought I'd love to read the book because I never have which is surprising for me because I do love the movies. So I would just love to see what the book is like. It really bothers me that the author's name is much bigger than the title. I don't know every time I look at it I just get annoyed. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to this. I just think it's going to be so much fun reading about it rather than watching it. I'm not sure if the book is going to beat the movie. Obviously in most cases the book is better than the movie but honestly Jurassic Park is just such a perfect movie that I actually don't know if the book will beat it this time but I am super excited to give it a go and see for myself. The next book I have to show you is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a very popular book in the last year or so on booktube. It is a standalone contemporary novel about two writers who meet and 
Basically, they both write for different genres. So January writes romance novels, while Gus writes literary fiction, as far as I know. So basically, they make a bet to swap genres to see who gets published first. This just sounds like so much fun. It sounds like a really cute little romance. It makes me think of summer, of course, so I probably won't read this until the summer. There's no point. I feel like it's just not the right time at the moment, but I am looking forward to reading it. I heard the romance is great. I heard the sex scenes are good. I just love reading about writers and I think they're going to have a bit of back and forth between the two characters, which is going to be really fun to read. So I'm just super, super excited to get to this in the summer. I'm sure I'll finish it in like a day or two. I definitely don't want to read it before that because I think it'll just put me in a summery mood and we're not quite in summer yet. So I definitely just want to hold on to it for now, but I just thought I'd buy it because it's definitely on my TBR for the summer. The next book I have to show you is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I have heard so many positive things about this book. My favourite booktuber of all time, Jesse the Reader, said that this was his favourite book of last year. So as soon as he said that, I was definitely very intrigued, especially because this is romance based as far as I know. And I know Jesse the Reader is not a huge fan of romance. So the fact that this was his favourite book of last year makes me realise that it must be really, really good. So I'm super, super excited. This is about a young black girl called Liz. She's trying to escape her town to go to college and she finds out that whoever wins prom king and queen gets a scholarship so she decides that she wants to try to become prom queen so she can get this scholarship to go to college. That's all I know about this book and that's all I want to know. It is also a standalone. I seem to have bought a lot of standalones this month. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> but this book is meant to be so, so good and I'm just so excited to dive straight in. Honestly, I want to get to this one very, very soon because it's just been on my mind ever since Jesse the Reader said it's his favorite book of last year. As I said, he's my favorite booktuber, so I trust his opinions and I'm just super excited to get to this and to see what I think. So hopefully we'll be getting to this one very, very soon and I will talk about it more once I've read it. The next book I have to show you is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is a historical fiction standalone novel. It takes place in 1969 and we follow our girl Kaya who is suspected of a murder. Kaya is described as the marsh girl because she lives alone in the marshes that she calls home and basically there comes a time where she just wants to be loved by someone so she meets two guys who end up falling in love with her so I think it's a bit of a love triangle. Honestly I don't know too much about this book but I know a few booktubers including Emma from Emma Books said this book was really really good. I heard it's a bit slow paced and a little bit of a slow burn but apparently the end result is well worth it. Honestly I don't read enough historical fiction. I mostly lean towards fantasy and contemporary so honestly I kind of want to read a bit more historical fiction this year so this one I think is a good place to start and I kind of like that I don't know too much about it because I just want to go in almost blind and just see what I think but I have heard it's really really great so I'm just really looking forward to getting to this one. The next book I have to show you is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Now, I already own this book and I've already read this entire series years ago. This is the, I think the 20th anniversary edition or something like that. So I just really, really wanted to get it just because I thought the cover was beautiful. I already own this cover and I absolutely love this cover as well. I don't know how well it's coming out on camera, but it has a really nice shimmer to it. It's beautiful. I really enjoyed this series when I read it. I think Lainey Taylor has fantastic writing. She's beautiful, beautiful writing. And I don't plan on rereading this book anytime soon. I just really liked the cover for the 20th anniversary edition so I just went ahead and bought it and do I regret it? Absolutely not. The next book I bought in the month of February is The Poppy War by Orf Kwan. This book is absolutely so popular on booktube. Apparently the entire series is absolutely fantastic. I don't actually want to know too much about this book. I know it involves magic and I know it involves an elite military school, but that's honestly all I want to know because I've heard such incredible things about this book. It was on a lot of booktubers' favorite books of last year. I've heard it's very, very dark as well. So I'm definitely gonna make sure I'm in the right mood for this kind of book. I've heard such amazing things. Everyone absolutely loves this book. So I'm just so, so excited to get to it. The next book I have to show you is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. As I said in my January wrap up, I read Passenger and Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken last month. And this is her new release that just came out in January. It is a standalone novel all about the Greek gods. So Zeus punishes the gods one day a year and makes them mortal. So the gods are forced to walk the earth and they're being hunted by these people who are trying to get their power. We've 
follow our main character Lore who is trying to get revenge on one of these gods after they brutally murdered her family. This book just sounds so much fun and so exciting. Honestly Alexandra Bracken does have really great writing and I love that this is about the Greek gods. I think the concept is so so clever. I'm so excited to dive right in. I hope I do like it more than Passenger and Wayfarer. I did enjoy those two books but they didn't quite reach four or five stars for me so I hope this one does. I've heard that the end of the chapters in this book are just all end on cliffhangers so once you finish a chapter you just have that drive to keep reading and I absolutely love that because nothing makes me not want to put a book down more than cliffhangers. I just love cliffhangers. I think they're so good. I think they really move the stories along. I honestly hope to get to this one quite soon. The cover of this really freaks me out. Like I can't look at it for too long. It actually makes me so uncomfortable and I don't know why. I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like all the snakes on her head. Medusa. I just I hate Medusa. Ooh just freaks me out. The next book I have to show you is The Conference of the Birds by Ransom Riggs. This is the fifth book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. So basically the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. That's a, such a mouthful. <laughs> the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series started out as a trilogy and then Ransom Riggs decided to add a second trilogy to the series. So I read the original trilogy and I really really loved it. I thought it was super unique and the fact that Ransom Riggs uses like old photographs as part of his stories I think that's absolutely genius but I haven't gotten to the fourth book, A Map of Days, yet. Honestly, I think I need to maybe reread the original trilogy or at least look at some book reviews to just jog my memory because it's been quite a while since I've been in this world and been with these characters. So I definitely think I need a bit of a refresher before I dive into the second half of the series. I know the sixth and final book just came out, so I definitely just want to binge the second trilogy. And again, I know this is Jessie the Reader's favourite series of all time and that's what got me to read the original series in the first place and I absolutely loved it. So I'm so excited to definitely dive into the second trilogy very very soon. I do want to get the sixth book soon just so I can binge the trilogy and then I'll have completed this series and it'll be very very sad saying bye to these characters. They are really great characters and the world is fantastic. I'm just really looking forward to continuing with this series. The next three books I bought in the month of February are Loveless, Radio Silence and Solitaire, all by Alice Oseman. I'm struggling to hold these books up. <laughs> Alice Oseman is the author of the Heartstopper graphic novel series. I read the first volume of Heartstopper this month, absolutely loved it, but I will give you more of my thoughts in my February wrap up. But I just loved it and made me want to read more of Alice Oseman's books because what I read from her graphic novel, it was brilliant, but I thought it would be interesting to read her actual writing in a novel. So I went ahead and bought three books by her. I don't know anything about them, but I do know that characters from Heartstopper are in some of her books so I'm really excited to see them again and these are I'm sure are just going to be quick easy reads they're all standalones they're all romance and that's more than enough for me I just love the covers as well I think they're absolutely beautiful I just cannot wait to dive right into these the last few books I bought I haven't gotten physically yet they haven't arrived at my door yet so I will insert photos somewhere on the screen the next three books I bought are Shadow of the Fox Soul of the Sword and Knight of the Dragon by Julie Kagawa I've heard really great things about this series Series and I just went ahead and bought the entire trilogy. So we follow our main character Yumiko whose family is slain and her home burned to the ground. So Yumiko holds one part of the ancient scroll of a thousand prayers and whoever holds this scroll will be granted a wish by the Kami dragon. I just think this sounds really unique and different and I love anything to do with magic and dragons and I just think it sounds so so exciting so I just cannot wait to read this series. Honestly I just wanted to buy the entire trilogy just so I could completely binge it. I haven't heard too much about this series but from what I have heard, I've heard it's really great. So I just cannot wait to read this series. Also, the covers of these books are just absolutely gorgeous. I'm just so, so excited to get to these books. The next book I bought in the month of February is Wildcard by Marie Lu. This is the sequel to the Warcross by Marie Lu. I haven't even read this one yet, but I know it has something to do with video games and that's already super intriguing for me. I love video games. And I've read Marie Lu's Legend trilogy, so I already know what her writing is like. I think she's brilliant. I think her world building is fantastic. So I'm just so excited to start this one. I think it's just duology. So I think Wildcard is the final book. I can just binge the two books together and I'm sure I'm going to love it. Cause as I said, Marie Lu is such a great writer. It has been so long since I've read a book by Marie Lu, so I'm just so excited to get to these two. The next two books I bought are Froy of the Exiles and Quintana of Sharon by Melina Marchetta. This is the second and third book in the Lumetere Chronicles. The first book is Finnegan of the Rock. 
I've owned Finnegan of the Rock for years and I still haven't picked it up but I've heard these books are going out of print so I just wanted to buy them before they do that and I just want to binge the series. It's a YA fantasy series. I've heard that each book follows a different character and according to Reagan over at Prue's Project the series is really really great and very very underrated. Besides Reagan I haven't heard a single other person on booktube talk about this series but I just want to give it a go and see what I think. So I have the second and third book on the way just so I can completely binge the series. The next book I bought in the month of February is The June Boys by Courtney Stevens. This book is about a serial kidnapper called the Gemini Thief who holds three boys every year from June 1st to June 30th of the following year. So the boys that are taken are known as the June Boys because they are held for 13 months in the months of June. Our main character Thea has reason to believe that the Gemini Thief has taken her cousin Alice. The June boys that are always kidnapped always show up alive, but the game changes when this time one of the boys turns up dead. So this book just sounds super exciting. I think the whole book revolves around you trying to figure out who the Gemini Thief is, but also why the Gemini Thief does take these boys and holds them for 13 years without hurting them, and why this time one of them actually turned up dead. This just sounds super intriguing. It's a standalone. It sounds so, so exciting. I love books that have me on the edge of my seat, so I hope this is going to be one of those. I just love mystery and things like that. I love having so many questions reading a book and being surprised at the end, so I'm hoping this has a really good twist or something, something that I won't expect. So I just cannot wait for this book to arrive on my doorstep because I really want to read it very very soon. I'm super duper excited. The final book I bought in the month of February is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. Everyone is talking about this book. It's meant to be so so sweet and touching and heartwarming. It is a standalone novel that follows our character Linus. So Linus is 40 years old and he's given an assignment for work where he has to go to this island that has an orphanage full of dangerous kids with magical powers. This book is meant to be so wholesome so beautiful. It's a standalone so I'm gonna probably read it in a day. A lot of people have said this is now one of their favourite books so that immediately has me super excited. I'm so 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 excited to get to this one. One of my favourite tropes is found family. I love books all about found family, about people coming together, all from different backgrounds and just completely just having this beautiful family connection and building friendships. I just love that. It's one of my favourite tropes. It just makes me so so happy to read about and I believe that's a big part of this book so that just has me super duper excited and I'm also obsessed with the cover of this book. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The colours, the font, absolutely stunning cover. I just love looking at it. <laughs> so I'm super excited to get to this one. Once it arrives on my doorstep I honestly think it'll be one of my next reads because I think I'll finish it very very quickly and it's also something I've been really looking forward to reading and honestly See, it's meant to be one of those books that is a pick-me-up if you're ever feeling down. So definitely in the lockdown it sounds like a really good idea to pick this book up. So I really can't wait for it to get here, I can't wait to dive right in and I will let you know my thoughts after I've read it. So that is it for my February book haul. I bought a lot of books this month as you can see. I want to say I won't buy as many in March but honestly I just don't trust myself to even say that so we'll see how it goes. I don't have any room left on my bookshelf so they're kind of just all over the place at the moment but I still like buying more. I just it gives me happiness, okay? Especially in lockdown. Nothing makes me happier than buying more books. It's kept me going, to be honest. <laughs> I am just so excited to dive into all these books and once I've read them, I will of course give you my final thoughts. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe, it would mean the world to me. Also, you can always leave a comment as well. Just say hello or let me know if you've read any of the books that I bought this month and whether you enjoyed them. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a lovely day. Slan live!